Good morning. <laughs> All right. Whew. Welcome to the chaos, everyone. <laughs> I'm your host, Steven Anderson. All right. Welcome to ZBrush Live. It's been a while. Let's see, make sure everything's working. Let me see. Start with the restream chat. Yep. <laughs> So I can see when you guys say stuff. You see. All sorts of things going on. So, um, yeah, things are going well. I hope things are going well for you too. Uh, if you have any cool news, go ahead and feel free to share it. I'd love to hear about it. Um, hopefully, hopefully I have the right things plugged into my uh, to the stream so that you know you can get the the chat feed up there. But uh, yeah, should be pretty cool and groovy. All right, sweet. Sweet. All right. So, hey, Matthias, how you doing? Good to see you. Let me see. So, last night, looks like the streams, uh, the chat stuff is working just fine. Uh, looks like it should be good. Good day. All right. So, let me turn this down a little bit. That should be better. <laughs> All right. So, Last night, uh, I put together a quick little bust of um, my Amaterasu character that I that I sculpted for part of the Art Station Challenge last year. <clears throat> um, just kind of a fun little, quick little something that I that I'm printing right now should be done in like 14 hours or something, <laughs> something ridiculous like that. Um, and yeah, once that's printed, I'll have it like sitting on my desk at work or something. I'll put pictures up on my Instagram so you guys can see it. Um, I've also started going through and printing and, uh, making desk pets available. Um, on my gum road uh, so I mean if you're interested in the digital files for the desk pets those are available <laughs> that's the shark and the shark comes with its little uh, this little ice cream bubble <laughs> looks like that and I also have stickers available on my Etsy so I'm starting to go through and kind of compile things and put them together on my website so I mean, you can see um, down in the bottom middle section you'll see my website smartest.com you feel free to drop by give it a give it a give it a look a look see and uh, yeah I mean, if you if you like what you see go ahead and, and give it a give it a purchase I'll also have my elephant up there at some point soon so uh, should have brought my other elephant um, and then I also have my hippo that's for sale so this one's painted, <laughs> but yeah, really fun and uh, really excited to see you know what you guys do with it. So yeah, to get started, I've been running a monthly design challenge. And this month, the theme is Midsummer Night's Horror. Okay, it's kind of a play off of uh, Midsummer Night's Dream. Just trying to be funny. <laughs> so if you're interested in participating in the um, in the monthly design challenges, uh, you're welcome to follow the the Facebook group. It's uh, the Facebook group is called uh, No Spare Time. I think I could pull that up probably and show you. 
Um, no spare time design challenge. Yeah. So there it is. Okay, so there's a new month, new theme. We've got a couple of people already posting and showing their stuff. You know, there's my there's my uh, post from the speed challenge. <laughs> it's just kind of fun. Okay, just wanting to have like a, a turtle with a rocket pack. <laughs> of course, he's wearing a helmet for safety. Okay, very important. Okay, and we got like the tears kind of coming off of the eyes and things like that. You know, just trying to trying to be fun, keeping it lighthearted and and energetic and you know keeping it fun. So so that's kind of the the idea, the design challenge. You know, find something that you want to be able to go ahead and do. Uh, you can interpret the theme however you want. Um, this is just an, an idea. This is just an inspiration for you to kind of get your creative juices flowing. Okay, so speed was July. Okay, next month will be will be announced at the beginning of the month. Okay, so yeah, uh, feel free to drop in and uh, and join the group. It's a it's a fun time. So. Now that we've got that, let's go ahead. Let's uh, I'll minimize that just so we can pull it up later if we want to. Okay, so I've got a couple of things that I wanted to work on. Since the theme this month is Midsummer Night's Horror, I was thinking maybe I'd go through and start by maybe taking an hour, and I'll put on my timer so I don't go too long. Um, put on a, a timer for an hour. Okay, one hour, so I can go ahead and I can start my own uh, Midsummer Night's Horror idea, okay, and I've got kind of an idea already on what it is that I want to do, so what I'm going to do, we're going to do something we haven't done in a while, we're going to start from the sphere, okay, and then after... Let's see, let's go to initialize, we'll say h divide to 8, take this to 8, okay, just so we have a simple sphere, make polymesh 3D, and then we'll uh, refresh this so we can go ahead and just start from, from 0, to start with like base. Okay, so now we can see we've got our symmetry on, which is great. Okay, so my idea for this month's theme is uh, the undead boyfriend, or you know, something, something along those lines. <laughs> and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by blocking in. And now, now here's a question for you: Would you rather see? Would you rather watch? Um, Kind of more of a, a realistic approach or would you rather see a more stylized approach uh, at the moment i'm thinking about going more stylized but i'm still i'm still yet to really decide it and it's probably not going to stay anyway so let's go over here geometry turn off smooth i'm just going to divide it a couple of times. Hey Mohammed, hey Charlie, how you guys doing? <laughs> hmm. Okay, let's turn on sculptress mode. have my smoothing brush at like a really low Z intensity so it takes a long time for it to really smooth out
feel like I can't see it. <laughs> yeah, this is like the fun stage where it's like we're just trying to figure out base forms and base shapes. Especially those shapes. I want him to feel really gaunt, but I also want him to feel like he was possibly like, you know, athletic, star quarterback on the on the high school team, something like that. You know, you're all American zombie. <laughs> okay. Um and then the idea is to go through and I'm going to make him Ooh, maybe I'll make him like the dude from Greece. Uh, what's John Travolta's character? I can't even remember. Maybe I could make him like that. And then, uh, except maybe with like a Letterman jacket, make him, but like, you know, give him that sort of look. And then I want to make like a Tinder profile for him. Not a real one, just like a mock-up. <laughs> It should be funny because you know summer love Hopefully the, the chat's working. Oh good, Twitch is on. Okay, good. I was worried for a second because I hadn't had any kind of uh, any person tune in yet from from uh, from Twitch, and so I was <laughs> I was curious if it was working or not. Huh? Baymax 1993. How are you? That's a really cool. Uh, A really cool username by the way. I love Baymax. Big Hero 6 is one of my favorites. Okay, so what do you guys think? Should I go, should I push him more kind of realistic or should I push him really stylized? See, I'm gonna want to take it like this. Oops, didn't even think about the back side there. <laughs> Stylized, I <laughs> look just like him. <laughs> uh, is it just because it's early in the morning, or is it because? <laughs> Because you're you actually are somebody's undead boyfriend. <laughs> yeah, let me see. So I think we're gonna Go ahead, and we're going to push him more in that stylized route. Okay, let's see. Right now, he's a little bit too normal. So let's do this. We're going to take 
this up. Yeah, it's already looking cooler. It's funny how simple little things like that can do so much to change the whole piece. And just going through and just a simple uh, change on where the uh, the features are. One of my one of my high school not high school uh, college professors uh, was really big on experimenting with feature placement like that just to be able to get a better idea or to better support um, the archetype that you're trying to design. Okay, so you get archetype and stereotype, and an archetype is kind of like a general. Let's go like really square here. Let's pull this back in. start to figure this out gotta eat my Cheerios before they get too soggy <laughs> hey gorgeous what you looking for I got these ones right here love you Let's see how much time we have. Okay, so we, we still have a bunch of time. We've only been at this for 10 minutes. Okay. Let's see. It's always kind of... Uh, kind of a challenge going through and just designing something on the fly. But it's so much fun. <laughs> so right now what I'm doing is I'm trying to go through and define some planes. I'm just using my trim dynamic brush. And uh, I'm just kind of going through and having at it. I need to make a new Damien standard brush because this one's always been too strong. Let's add a little bit back in here. I have no idea how that place is, is pronounced, but welcome, Eric. <laughs> it's a good to see <laughs> And welcome from LA. <laughs> hmm. So just to be able to catch those of you up who are just, uh, just tuning in, um, I've got this monthly design challenge that I run out of the uh, out of a Facebook group called No Spare Time. Okay. So if you go and look that up, you're welcome to join the the design challenge. It'll just be monthly prompts. Uh, the theme was through in sculpting right now is aimed at kind of like undead boyfriend sort of. <laughs> sort of idea um, and then I'm going to make a, a tinder profile mock-up forum um, right now
Let's go ahead and get some eyes in there. The neck. Ah. Sometimes that'll happen. So all that was, I mean, it's just a very simple thing. All that was, was that uh, I've hit V, and that switches your colors over on their left-hand side. Uh, you can see that if I hit V. Um, sometimes what happens is when I'm hitting, when I'm going to select my move brush, I go a little too quickly, <laughs> which always drives me nuts. <laughs> because like as soon as you uh, as soon as you take your um, take your brush off of <clears throat> off off of the uh, take your cursor off of the menu, the menu disappears. And so, yeah. In. We're not going to like sculpt a full mouth bag or anything like that, but uh, we could. Blocking eyes now. Let's say append. Oops. Okay, this isn't quite the one that I was wanting, so you know, not a big deal, but whatever. Need to get back into sculpting from Essex. Welcome, Nick of Essex. <laughs> so, Nick of Ex Essex. How's the weather for you over there right now? Okay, so one of the things I want to do, and it might be worth waiting, um, because I'm not sure yet if I want to make, let's see, single edge loop. Um, Poly group, poly loop. I'm getting like too much light in my eyes. <laughs> there we go. That's better. It's like there's just too much contrast. It's too bright behind my screen in order to, to see. <laughs> this sphere so what we're gonna do let's just say delete okay we're just gonna get a regular no way okay I see what happened so sphere 3d okay this is how I like to play with my with the eyes so I'm gonna select a mask pen I'm trying to decide if I want to make like a large pupil or a small pupil. Probably a smaller pupil, right? 
smaller iris. So I just go through and I do that and I bring my tool line it up with that and then I just kind of stretch it out. What this does is it kind of gives you this impression of it being darker because it's changing forms and it's really quite a simple way to be able to fake an eyeball. If I wanted to, I could also come over here. Let's make a polygroup for now. Okay. We can just kind of pull that in. Nah. Yeah, we'll just we'll just leave it. We'll leave it how it is. Okay, so now we just gotta scale it down, and pop it into his head. Actually, come over here. Let's say deformation. We'll do a rotate this way. Gravity is working against me. Better use the mouse. Rotate negative five. Oh, so it's going to play like that. Okay. Rotate five. Is that what I want? Yeah, looks like that's what I want. Okay. So let's go ahead and play with placement on this. It needs to be smaller, I think. And eh, maybe bigger. Turn on transparency. I mean, it looks like if I were to hit mirror and weld, it would probably, like, Oh no, it looks like it's not quite to the center point, but uh, even so, yeah, I want these. I want these more in the center anyway. I don't know. We'll, we'll play with it. We'll, we'll try to figure it out. So what I'm going to do is duplicate it and mirror it over. <laughs> uh, that's funny. Okay, I think what I need to do is instead of instead of having them with the pupil actually sculpted on I don't know we'll leave it for now I guess I may want to to go through and uh, And they want to actually go through and like eliminate the actual sculpted um, iris. Yeah, those eyes are just they're just too small. Say delete island. Okay. Not so come on, transparency. <laughs> oh, 
Well, nice of you to, to stop by, Eric. <laughs> Have a good day. Don't know where you're at right now, but it sounds like you might have been Eastern Europe or something. If that's the case, I hope you have a wonderful Sunday, and well, I guess you might not even be to Sunday yet. You're only like 10 hours ahead. Never mind. But have a good weekend. Let's see. Brush. You know what? If I'm going to go stylized, I'm just going to go really stylized. Let's do this. Let's commit. Here's what I'm going to do. Turn that all the way around. Make it bigger. Howdy, Wilfred. How you doing? It's been a while since I've seen you around here. Okay. So here's where we're going to go ahead and we're going to start pushing and squishing and let's really kind of push this out of reality. I'm trying to decide if that feels better or worse. Let's see. If you guys have suggestions, like feel free to just toss them out. We'll uh We'll uh, we'll think about this together. It's funny because like characters like this kind of make me think about the uh, the Red Skull or whatever he's called from uh, Captain America from the Avengers. <laughs> Let's kind of flatten this out. I think that was a poor design choice, but we'll see. Whenever I use my move brush, I usually like to have it so that he's um, got a good, uh, a nice high focal shift, well, medium high focal shift, usually like between 20 and 30 ish. Um, these forms, figure those out. Is this going to be a statue? Um, I don't know. I might make it like a Google back face masking. I don't I don't want to use back face masking right now. But it is a good trick. Um Okay. 
Okay, let's go through. Let's add in a neck. Okay, so my IMM primitives brush. I mean, I haven't made it available or anything like that yet. Um, but I mean, it's it's basically a modified standard. Um, I didn't particularly like the uh, the options that that it gave me. Um, Uh, the default one, I felt like the shapes just weren't manipulative, manipulatable enough. They weren't malleable enough for me. So I went ahead and uh, it reminds you of Nosferatu. It's funny, I thought about doing Nosferatu. Um, but then I just decided I wanted to go back to the to the undead boyfriend sort of idea. So, so that's what this is going to be. <laughs> I got to give him like shaggy hair and everything like that. Um, Letterman jacket. Um, and then he's going to be holding uh, a clump of dirt with a with a flower poking out of it. Let's do something more like that. Oh, I thought I had my lasso on. I did, but then I changed it to the rectangle. <laughs> That's just how it works. <laughs> oh, nerds. Okay. Okay, let's just go through here and we'll say inflate. It's probably like all the neck that we'll need. And then we'll just kind of build off of it. So let's see. How's everybody? How's everybody doing? Are you guys uh, doing anything fun for uh, like personal projects or? Let's go through. Do something like this. Push this in. Pull these out. I've been working on uh, my desk pet series, uh, which I've started releasing on my Gum Road. So if you're if you're interested in purchasing the digital files, they're available on my Gum Road. It's really cool. So you know, here's here's my hippo. Okay, so you can go through. They're 3D printable files. Really cool. Got my uh, my shark. Okay, and then he comes with like an ice cream, an ice cream voice bubble, which is really fun. <laughs> yeah, that voice bubble looks like this, by the way. And if you're interested in stickers, I do have a bunch of stickers that I'm uh, that I'm selling as well, including like a, you know a Yoda Buddha, my fish bot. Uh, and those are available on my Etsy. Um, I'm trying to put them into my store on, um, what's it called? On my website. You can see my website down middle, <laughs> middle of the screen, but it, yeah, it's really fun. Uh, so hopefully, you know, if you're interested, you want to have those cool things, you know, palling around with you, I would invite you to check her out. Okay, so now the trick, you know what, I'm going to experiment with something real quick. Because we can. 
Okay, let's kind of smooth that out. I want to I want to try to make him feel younger. And I think part of what's making him feel too old might be the might be the top here. Just that he has like not enough forehead or something. Maybe that the cheekbones are too pronounced or something. It's like what I'm wanting to do. I want him to feel kind of more college aged. Or, or high school or something like that. And I think to be able to do that, maybe we'll, maybe we'll just give him an actual nose. Hmm, it's tricky. Maybe I just need to like make the brows feel lighter, make them feel more open, make make the eyes feel more round. Cause he does, he just feels like a mummy. like a mummy. So what we're going to do, I'm going to duplicate this just to be able to keep it. Let's save it just so that we don't lose it. Design themes, sculpts, you say new folder, horror, I should go through and like really name these a one oops didn't want to open that a two okay so horror no I don't wanna put that on the front there okay Yeah, let's go for something more more athletic. Let's let's really start to kind of push this in that direction. And then let's rethink this mouth a little bit. And maybe once we go through and start adding in things like uh, like the teeth, it'll start to feel better. But now it's starting to go more of a Pixar route, and that's totally fine. We'll just we'll keep it like that, I guess. It's a very tricky game to play, but you know something about the aesthetic that I wanted to learn and that's what the design challenge idea is and you know being able to figure out new things and develop yourself you know so that's why it's called a challenge right <laughs> the clothes make the zombie <laughs> how you doing ghost Man, it's people it's people like you that make it so much harder to to not be on the stream every week. Miss you. Miss you, buddy.
Now it kind of almost looks like Ernesto de la Cruz. Remember me. Even though I cannot sing, remember me. <laughs> Okay, let's see. <laughs> Zombie Lord Farquaad. Yeah, I mean, it really could be, couldn't it? Yeah, the sun's starting to come out. Go away, sun. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. <laughs> it's like I go through and I adjust the blinds so that I can see my screen. No, it's like the sun's like, hello, everybody. <laughs> okay, so I've got like 20 minutes left on this, and then I'm going to jump in and start working on some rock sculpting. Uh, for my Candyland scene. If uh, if you haven't seen my Candyland scene yet, you're missing out. Just kidding. <laughs> okay, let's let's block in some hair. I'm I'm in the mood for blocking in a little bit of this hair, giving him kind of something of a mop top sort of thing, you know. So let's do this. Figure out. I like. I like to say I'm going to do something, and then I do something completely different, and then it's like, oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Grab insert mesh primitives. I think the hair's gonna. Help them to feel much more the way. Ooh, I kind of like the idea of having it be sort of flat on top. Let's let's have it be sort of flat. I kind of like that slope. So we'll see if I continue liking it once I. <laughs> oh, uh, split unmasked. We're going to start renaming these things. I left. Head. Okay. Oh, because I turned off the smooth. I was like, why did it? <laughs> Funny. Okay. Let's do this real quick before I get into too much actual sculpting. Let's make that a different poly group. He looked French for a second. I think he looks more like uh, like a Russian foot soldier with like or no, is it Russian? Maybe whoever has like the the really cool like beret things that they got going on. Um, Yeah, it's hard to see. So this is one of my tricks. If I can't see my topology, not that my topology super matters, it's just helpful. <laughs> Let's start. So what I'll do is I'll change the flat color. I'll just drag the material clear out to the canvas, and that makes it so that it's a flat color. 
Uh, and that makes it so that there's absolutely no shading at all on the mesh. If you want to be able to change it back, just go to Startup Material or whatever material you have, and and uh, you're yeah, good to go. Okay, let's see if I can get some good. Oh, I don't want to Dynamesh yet. Or not Dynamesh, uh, Sculptures that yet. I know, I had you fooled. I had you fooled. <laughs> okay, so let's start putting in ear. So are, are any of you gonna participate in the uh, in the monthly design challenge? Anybody gonna go join the uh, the uh, no spare time uh, design challenge? Now it doesn't have to be a ZBrush sculpt. Uh, if you want to, you can participate with drawings or. 3D models or paintings or whatever it is that you want to do. It's a very open-ended sort of design challenge. Um, in fact, one of my buddies, uh, he went through and did this. I don't know if it qualifies as as VR AR, but uh, but yeah, he did something you know kind of VR AR esque, and uh, it was really cool. Little little bat. For, uh, for this month, so he's like already taken care of. <laughs> yeah, I kind of like keeping it up there. Yep, who has the time? <laughs> That's why I'm taking this time to go through and... Uh... and work on it, because otherwise... <laughs> <laughs> it ain't gonna get done. Okay, yeah, these are this is my uh, my hairbrush that I developed. Um, I like having really simple stylized shapes. Oops, wrong. Uh, no, it's not Alt. It's Control. There we go. Um, I like having simple stylized shapes. And so I like having uh, this sort of just simple, simple shapes I can draw out. Works really nicely. And then I can just come in here and I can kind of split out certain hairs. Um, Just gonna pull it out so that it feels a little less uh, tidy. <laughs> tidy, we could say. Indeed, we could say that it is tidy. So I'm just gonna kind of pull this up, pull it around, fix that shape, something. And uh, yeah, we'll probably go through and add some more strokes or whatever. Uh, let's add in one of these. Not that one, it's this one. So I'm using control to be able to make it uh, rotate. It's really, really handy. Um, I think it's one of those things that's just a little too underutilized. But it gives you really pretty excellent control. Not perfect control, but pretty excellent control. Got 
that should be all right. No, got to commit that. Let's give him like this updo. Commuting 12 plus hours a day. Do you work out of the country? What do you? <laughs> how do you do that? Let me see. No, 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 no. Quick question. At what point in the process do you usually connect the head to the neck? Uh, it depends. Um, it depends really on like what my intent is. Um. I mean, there may be times where I don't, like, I just, I just flat out don't connect um, the pieces at all. Um, there might be times where I connect it and it might feel too early, or, um, or there might be days where I use a base mesh, which has, you know, obviously the head and the, and the shoulders already attached. Um, so I guess that there, there's, there's a plethora of different ways that I, that I like to go about it. And it really just kind of depends on, on the day, really. Um, and on what it is that I'm creating. If I'm doing something like this, where it's like highly design centric, and I have no idea what it's going to turn out to look like. I'll usually keep things pretty separate for a long, long time. Um, and sometimes I don't, I don't ever join them together. It's kind of, kind of interesting that way. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and at least give myself a second eye. All right, got eight minutes. Okay, so you're 12 hours a day. Okay, okay, I see. I, I, I wow. <laughs> I was way off there. I was, I was understanding that you were commuting 12 hours a day. So you're, so you're essentially working you know, a base eight hours or however long, and you have up to four hours of commute time. That's insane. <laughs> Where do you live so that I don't move there? <laughs> you know, that being said, there are a lot of people that actually do like the commute. So like um, Corey Loftus, seems like he said that he lives pretty far out, uh, like far away from Disney. Okay, so you get like an hour and a half commute each way, depending on what time of day you actually uh, leave. Man. Man, 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 man alive. Uh, you know what? Let's do it like this. Let's say, since it's done saving, let's go geometry, crease, uncrease all. Because uh, when you use the extender, it goes through and creates creasing along those uh, extension points to be able to help maintain the shape. So I'm just going to say uncrease all. Let's, uh, let's make that all one polygroup. Marietta, huh? Wow. Wow. Hmm. 
something keeps happening in that it's like turning off my asymmetry. I wonder what's what's causing that. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm fortunate that, like, my my commute to work, I'm able to take the, the 210, take that down and in. Because um, I think that if I had to take the, uh, it's like I used to have to take the 110 up into Glendale, and that's a nightmare. The 110 anywhere. <laughs> But it's not the 405, and it's not the 10. So OK, so we're going to pull this down, something like that. Unmanned aerial vehicles. That's pretty cool. So do you work on, on making them or do you pilot them? Both are cool, by the way. This, that's like a super slick... Uh, this is super slick. That's, that's really cool career to be in. What do I know about Sculptress? I'm not sure I'm understanding your question. Feels like I'm getting bits and pieces from Facebook. I don't know if everybody's. Uh, you know, check and see really quick if you're. Uh, if you're if you're getting all of your messages across on the uh, on the the chat over here, just right above my uh, my picture. Um, I'm having a hard time understanding a couple of the things that are coming through on Facebook. Uh, Charlie Barda on Facebook said that was bugging me. I'm not sure. <clears throat> I'm not sure what that means, uh, unless you're talking about like traffic bugs you. In which case, yeah, yeah, we got you. <laughs> um, otherwise, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what that means. Um, what do you know about Sculptress? Project is dead, Pixlogic, oh, so it might be. Um, I don't know if they're developing it further as, um, as a standalone project or, or anything like that anymore. I suspect that they probably are not. Um, but yeah, I, I, that's something I didn't actually think about, I don't think. Um, is Sculptress one of those one of those softwares that you've used in the past? Okay, so forms right now are really messy and Geo would be ashamed. <laughs> But we'll clean them up. They will be clean. This is one of those things that I like to do to just kind of make it look like it's joined. 
they're not really actually joined and you can look and see it's like it's just kind of overlapping geometry but it makes it look like it's like it's joined together or like it's got more unity to it so yeah should be pretty cool all right only got like a couple minutes left i think oh 30 seconds 30 seconds man that's just like no time at all <clears throat> what can we do in 30 seconds and smear this out a little bit okay we'll have to worry about things like uh like a hand and arm next time Okay, so we're gonna save that. Horror. Replace it, please. Okay, cool. So there we go. I'll keep it up for right now. But now we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna jump over into Candyland. Um, Candyland 20. And here we go. Alright, so what I want to do. Is I want to focus on kind of separating some of these rocks out. We've already got them kind of separated. Okay, just to be able to show you what's going on. Uh, I essentially went through and cut the patches. Uh, I'm pretty sure I did this on stream, so you're welcome to go ahead and check it. Uh, check back on, on past streams to see kind of the process on that. <coughs> um, and, but now, so I've got all these different little little pieces that I can cut out and, and work with. So I'm just going to say auto groups just to make sure that each piece is its own polygroup. Uh, and then I can work on individual pieces. So real quick. Ooh, actually, let's try this. So there's this really cool thing inside of geometry, I think. Might actually be deformation. Let's try deformation. No, I think it's geometry. Clay polish. There we go. So at work, uh, when we're working on uh, rock work and things like that for the for the rides and for the attractions at Disneyland, um, zombies in Candyland, zombie dragons in Candyland. Okay, oh. yeah, I'm gonna set another hour. Because I also want to get into posing the characters. Uh, if you remember, I have these uh, these characters in here. That's the wrong one. Where's my character? Anyway, I got my dragons, but I had a I had a character. I was one that I brought them in. Maybe I didn't. Maybe I forgot to bring them in. Um, but yeah, one of the things that we'll go through and do, like I'll, I'll load them in so we have them. Char B3. This guy. So I want to, I want to do a couple of things. Um, and I'll probably save the second character for another, uh, for another week. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I want to go through and do a different facial expression. Um, I don't think I have the sketchbook around here right now. I might somewhere. But essentially the, uh, the, the dragon that's kind of being leapt off of, um, I want that dragon's rider to have kind of like this like panicked <laughs> sort of face. So... That's going to be kind of the, uh, did I not start that timer? I didn't start that timer. Timer started. All right. Bye, Wilfred. I hope you have a wonderful, wonderful day. You totally deserve it. But yeah, anyway, so that's what we're going to do. We're going to have the, uh, the two different facial expressions, and we're going to call it good. Okay, so let's try this uh, clay polish and see where it gets us. What this will do is it'll uh, it'll kind of go through and search for hard edges and it'll amplify those so you can see if I keep polishing that I'm starting to get kind of this uh, 
this chunky sort of shape. So let's try doing this, and we'll say inflate. Okay, some of these pieces, I might go through and like consolidate them or eliminate them. Let's let's see actually. It's like this is a little distracting to me, and I feel like that'd just be too much to clean up, so I'm just gonna eliminate some of these. And then we'll bring Like I don't want it to feel too much like it's all sort of just messy like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to end up taking some uh, some of these sections. I'm not even going to change my view. I'm just going to kind of bring this over so that it lines up. Okay. I'm going to bring it out some too. Some bulk. We don't want to use the sculptress mode on this. So you can see what it's what it's doing. It's just, it's really just a cheap way of kind of getting these uh, these shapes and getting these creases and and things like that. But it works. It works really pretty well. Um, I'm just going to come through here. Let's just pinch this together. Oh, come on. Bigger brush. And then what's cool is that I can go through and I can just use my move brush and manipulate where these creases actually fall. Um, some of these places we're going to want to go through and kind of smooth out and then pinch back. And it's like this is how we did rock work at DreamWorks. This is how <laughs> this is how some people do it at, at uh, at Disney, it's it's really kind of just a a quick method. The thing with rock work is that it doesn't have to <coughs> it doesn't have to deform. Um, now, don't get me wrong. There are people who go through and take a tremendous amount of care in making sure that topology on their rocks is nice and clean and pristine and just works for everything right um when you have an entire island to put together um and your art director is like i want to be able to <laughs> go everywhere and see the whole island if i want to make a choice to go somewhere uh on the other side of the island one shot to the next i want to make sure that i've got the uh the uh the geometry there to to accommodate and uh and you gotta go through and you gotta have this uh this stuff like really pretty quickly put together and and this is just a just like a quick simple way of being able to handle that um again i mean the topology doesn't look like much okay it doesn't look good <laughs> it's not the kind of topology that you would be able to put onto um, onto a demo reel and have people salivate over. But uh, but the rocks when you're done looks pretty good, you know. Just a bunch of back and forth. 
be sure that if you if you get to a point where it's like I want to change forms or shapes like I did just there, um, don't feel bad about you know going through and changing things and pulling things around. Uh, is it okay to decimate the model and auto unwrap in Maya when you do rock environment like this? So something that's really, really cool, uh, and this is a, a trick that we used at DreamWorks, um, is that when we had a model like this and we had to unwrap UVs, we would just use the UV master inside of ZBrush. Um, and that would give us a good, um, a good basic unfold because going through and just unfolding in Maya or Blender or wherever, um, it's going to take a lot of processing power. It's going to take a long time. But ZBrush is really good about doing it really pretty quickly. Um, so, I mean, I, I think I think it'd be reasonable if we were to go through and and, uh, and, and cover that at some point uh, when we get there. Um, I don't know that we'll get here, get there today or not, um, but maybe that's something I could put in my notes for next week. Um, keep my notes on hand. Okay, well, I guess it wouldn't be next week, but next time. Okay, one hour for, maybe we'll start off with environments. Rock work, I'll put UVs question mark. And we'll see what else we, oh yeah, we'll do the, uh, we'll work on our horror sculpts. <laughs> A little bit too. We'll see what else we do. We'll see what else we do. Uh, we'll probably like jump around all the time. Um, but yeah, let's have fun with it. Game Luencer, how you doing? <laughs> how is your weekend treating you so far? Yeah, it was fun. So when I um, when I was working on how to train your dragon, one of the things that that I made I made all the dragon cages. Um, I made <clears throat> I made there's a in fact I don't I don't remember how yeah so there's this there's this scene in the movie where Grimmel is checking out his map. I, I made the uh, I made the map, by the way, the map and his compass and the little magnifying glass that he has. It's pretty fun. I like I like making little props and stuff. Anyway, so uh, one of the things that I made, he was he was outside of the the Vikings Mead Hall, uh, their 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 eatery, their cafeteria, if you will, you know. Um, and he was sitting underneath this large statue of stoic. Uh, I sculpted the the statue's head. Um, and that was awesome. That was, that was a really cool, um, uh, really cool project to get during the film. And a, it was a lot of this, it was a lot of this just going through and just kind of figuring out, uh, where do my creases need to go? How do I define these planes? Um, and then you just go ahead and you just kind of tweak and push and pull until you get the forms that you want. Yeah, real simple, real simple. Um, it's really not, not uh, super complicated. Bichar, dude! <laughs> Game wins. You're just trying to learn 3D stuff. Well, this is a great way to learn 3D stuff. Like having resources like uh, like ZBrush Live, it's tremendous. Like I wish that I had had ZBrush Live around when uh, when I was learning, because I'm I'm self-taught. Um, 
and I mean, it took a lot of effort, but it's one of those things where now I'm a ZBrush cowboy, as it were, <laughs> where it's pretty much all that I use. <laughs> That's the, that's the term that people will use in the industry to describe um, to describe a person who is just ZBrush. Okay. Let's get some of that pinched together. Get some of that pinched together. Get some of that pinched together. This is always really exciting when it feels like it's working and it's starting to turn out more of a rocky sort of sort of look. So now in here, I want this to be flatter. So I'm going to use my trim dynamic. And watch this. I'm going to make it fairly large. I'm just going to. Oop, that's too much. Sometimes it gets kind of tricky to play with. Okay, here's another trick. I'm gonna I'm gonna do something different because it's not working quite as well as I'd like. I'm just gonna kind of put my brush right around there, something like that. And then actually let's let's uh, solo these pieces out. Come on, you. It's so low because I want to make sure that that I don't want I don't want to I don't want to affect the the bottom at all. I want the bottom to stay where it is. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take my gizmo. I'm just going to make it so that it's pretty flat. It doesn't have to be flat flat. We're just going to flatten that out a little bit like that. And look at that. Now we've got this really cool kind of plateau with a little bit of a crack going through it. Okay, so now we can go through, we can do things like that in other spots. Like right here could be cool. Um, let's use the mask pen. Go ahead and do something like that. It's going to take this over here. Come with me. Kind of give it a little bit of a crack, and maybe I can make it a little uneven of a surface. So maybe this part is raised up a little higher. And let's give this a little bit more of a of a pinch here. That's looking cooler. Okay. Let's get some of that going in there. <clears throat> See what's cool about doing rock work is that and especially using this sort of method, I mean, you can see it's it's stretching these polygons out quite a bit. Um, and the the nice thing about having these these thing these faces being stretched out like that is it gives you more of a natural sort of uh, sort of you know rock face sort of look. So you know, as as we keep going, we'll, you'll see more and more of that. But but yeah. Where is that coming from? 
That's a messy one. Okay, so what I'm going to do, let's... Yeah, that one doesn't seem like it's going to... I'm going to lock my camera, just so I don't have to worry about rotating it at all. And I'm going to collapse one of those edges down. Let's collapse this one down too. Come on, you. Yeah. Come on, baby. That's probably the problem is that it's underneath. It's like it's inter interfering with uh, or intersecting with another piece. Some of these pieces I can just go through with my with my Z modeler brush and just kind of collapse those edges down, and that'll get rid of those spikes. Um, it's kind of the problem with the way that I created these meshes, but it's not a huge deal. Right now I'm trying to learn baking. Baking is really cool. Baking is really good. Um, high poly baking. Good uh, Good specification there because Mitch says he just learned how to bake a cake. Or just baked a cake. So, uh, <laughs> you know, is that a high poly cake? Uh, are you going to do textures on that cake there, Mitch? Huh? You gonna, gonna, gonna? Not Mitch, Mick. Oh my goodness. <laughs> That's funny. Mick, yeah. Sorry, buddy. Uh, being taught by a guy who worked on how to train the dragon is cool. Oh, I'm glad you think so. <laughs> glad you think so. Oh, good. We still got 40 minutes to work on this rock work. <laughs> um, nice to see you, Sculpting. Nice, to, nice, nice for you to drop by, dude. Are you, like, are you coming out to the summit, b -chad? Are you coming? Huh? 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 Dude, Jose, how you doing, dude? It's been a while since I stopped in and said hello. Well, it's been a while since I sculpted, so you know it's <laughs> it's been crazy. Like things things have gotten insane at work, and so it's it's been kind of a uh, it's been kind of crazy. It's been and, and kind of crazy. I mean, like really crazy. Yeah, we're gonna pull some of these pieces up here, some of these, uh, some of this topology up here, so that I can have better access to it. Um, oh, not solo. There we go. But yeah, dude, I'm working. I'm working on stuff for multiple parks right now, <laughs> and. It is a blast. Like, like I, I cannot underscore that enough. Um, and it's it's so awesome, feeling so needed and so included and uh, so wanted uh, at work. Like, that's that's like my. <laughs> it's 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 not always been something that I've. That I've thought about like I want to work on stuff for Disneyland <laughs> I always thought you know I'm gonna work for Disney before I turn 35 and I'm here um, but it's like I never I never imagined I'd be working on theme park attractions and, and things like that and it's it's cool it's cool but it's it's even cooler that people want me there you know feels like a feels like a little family so my my suggestion is you know be open to opportunities as they come and then uh be involved work hard and you'll find places that that value you and that value what you do and rely on you. Um, you know, people, people at work rely on me very heavily for a lot of different things, um, and it's because I've got 
a wide range of experience ranging from video games to uh, toys and animated film, um, production topology, UVs, everything. So like I've, I've, I've done everything now. <laughs> and so it's, uh, and I'm still young, still young. But that's the kind of problem you need. You want to be, you want to be wanted, you want to be needed. Like one of the things I, I really uh, admire about my friend Ana Carolina, if you if you watch her streams at all, uh, you kind of understand what it is that she does. But she does a lot of a lot of programming. Um, really, really neat stuff for AR and VR applications. And she's artistic and she's technologically adapt. Uh, and just really good at everything she does so it's like you know those sorts of things give her a really good amount of job security and she works with cool people and she enjoys what she does and so you know and those are things that she probably would not have thought to go into as as a kid you know but uh but yeah uh, not yet planned well dude if you if you do decide to come you know, let me know uh, we'll go get supper or something. Um, yeah, no, uh, Mick. Yeah, no, I haven't. I haven't been streaming a whole lot lately because work's been work's been crazy. Because um, I was originally streaming every Wednesday night, and I really loved that. And that was that was really good. Uh, but then I actually got so. Uh, at church, we have we get callings to be able to kind of you know, um, to be able to to teach the youth or to be able to work with the primary, which is like the the, the young children and whatnot. Um, anyway, so I I recently got I, I had been teaching Sunday school uh, at church, which was cool, but then I was called to to work with the with the youth with the young men. And uh, that was it was a very different change, but that required that I be available uh, Wednesday nights. Um, and so I changed to Friday for my streaming. And then I just I had so much happening for work that I just decided, you know, how about we do something more like um, like a like a bi-monthly stream or something like that so yeah so yeah right now I'm, I'm kind of more of like a like a bi-monthly streamer plus like uh i do the group stream <clears throat> so um Anna carolina and i started it with uh with ashley adams and i believe next week next week um Uh, maybe it's the week after. Yeah, I think it's the 27th. I think it's going to be the 27th, but I can't remember off the top of my head. I'd have to I have to go through and check. In fact, maybe I'll just go ahead and check because it should be fairly easy for me to find. Um. The 25th. What's the 25th? No, not the 25th. It's the 27th. So yeah, I was right. The 27th. So it'd be a Tuesday. Um, so not this coming Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, um, it'll be, <clears throat> it'll be the, uh, it'll be a, uh, the three of us, it'll be Ana Carolina and I, uh, with the addition of Pablo Gomez, uh, Gomez Munoz. Oh my goodness. That's embarrassing. I'm sorry, buddy. 
<laughs> you know what? Let's see if we can uh, pinch all this together. Cool. But yeah, so that'll be really cool. So so Tuesday the twenty seventh so far. I mean we haven't we haven't uh, gotten into all the uh, logistics of it and whatnot yet. Uh, so nothing's one hundred percent decided. But so far that seems to be the uh, the right. The right date and it would be uh, I think like 5 5 p.m. or something like that um, Pacific time oh, come on you oh, my nose is all itchy I have no idea what's doing that it's like <clears throat> um, Learned 3D modeling and animation in school. Maya to ZBrush and back to Maya. Yeah, yeah, and that's phenomenal workflow. I love Maya. Um, I've been using that since 2006 or something like that, and I've been in ZBrush since 2012. And dude, the two of them together, it's incredible. It's powerful, for sure. Okay, so I want to try to get uh, something more angled. So yeah, Maya is really good, and I love ZBrush. Got the so for those of you who are here at the beginning of the stream, I showed you uh, a piece that I had. Um, that I'd gone through and created um, for part of my is a is an art station um, challenge submission. I went through and created a bust, and uh, yeah, have her on the on the printer right now. Should be pretty cool. Should be able to print her. She should end up being something like. Like this big, something like that, um, if I remember correctly. Um, but yeah, I'm super excited. <laughs> it's just a quick uh, going through, and I, you know, I keyed everything together. Oh, this is the wrong head. Uh oh, did I print? I think I might have printed the wrong head, guys. Oh, oh my goodness, because this is supposed to be keyed in. Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh, and is it the wrong bust too? No freaking way. No way. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's let's try this. Um clone import STL. Oh, good. Look, it's got the it's got the key in it. We're good. We're safe. 
<laughs> uh, okay, let's uh, control shift D import the other pieces so yeah here we go it's got the keys in it good oh my gosh that freaking just okay so let's let's just bring all these pieces in this is how you process STLs to make sure that everything's working right uh, what happens is that it'll go through and it'll replace whatever subtool you have selected. Um, so if you want to have, if you want to be able to keep those pieces, you have to Control Shift D or duplicate. You get your duplicate button there. Z plugin. You go ahead and import STL. Now we got this hair bun piece. Okay, so now we can turn that back on, and now we've got all of our, all of our pieces. Oh my goodness. Kind of freaked me out. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead. Let's save over this. Bust. You want to replace it? Yes, I want to replace it. How did I create the hair? So the hair is something that I created. Uh, I have a. If any of you are familiar with the with the Dylan Ekren brush, um, I have one that's similar, and I just you know just click and drag it out um, to create this hair. I went ahead and I I don't remember exactly how, but uh, it was I essentially turned off my my thickness. Um, my thickness. Like you go through and you create your uh, you create your base. And then you create strokes on that base. Um, stro strokes meaning like with the with the topology brush or with um, any curve brush, you cr you have to create curves on on a surface. And then you can use your um, your hairbrush to create hair strands growing going along those strokes. It works so super well. And it was so cool, it was so simple, and and uh, it's been just a tremendous help to me. I'm pretty, I'm pretty sure it's, uh, I'm pretty sure it's X, uh, XM Collect, XM, what's 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 the name of the? Hold on, we're gonna go look for it. YouTube, I'm gonna go to ZBrush because we can. Okay. Oh, my buddy Matt Thorpe. up. Awesome. Really, really awesome. And that's a, I love that character too. Uh, let's see. Playlists. Oh, look, we're live with Steven Anderson. That's so cool. I've heard he's a pretty neat guy. Um, let's say Summit. 2019 Summit. Uh, announcement is up. Well, it's like I can remember the face of the guys that presented, so hopefully I can uh, find that presentation. Oh, there's so many good ones. I'm pretty sure it's XM Collectibles. So let's uh, let's just go up and oh hey look, there's the presentation that I was involved in. <laughs> that was fun. My part was super minimal, uh, so it's not like it's not like there's a whole lot that you could get out of it from me. But if you listen to Zach, he's got a lot of cool creative bits that he shares. Um... Let's say XM. Yep, this is them. Okay, so check this out. Let me see if I can find it. Because this is so cool. Yeah, here you go. So he's going through and he's making his uh, making his strands. Let's actually see if we can let's up the speed a little bit. Um, 
check this out. So frame mesh. So it's going through and that's creating curves along those group, those poly groups. Okay. Um, and then he went ahead and he he hit that with the with the brush, and then he just kind of made it bigger, and now he's able to go ahead and use it, uh, all the different little strands, and uh, and use that to make it feel like hair. So super cool. <laughs> Paul's a freak, but he's super cool. I like Paul. <laughs> um, let me see. Oh my goodness, am I Swedish? No. <laughs> nope. Is Saturday a paying gig? Uh, I'm not sure what uh, what you're referring to. Um, I'm not I'm not paid to do live streaming for Pixelogic. Um, it's just something that I get to do in my free time. Uh, I'm not Swedish. Awesome. Thanks, brother. Uh, should I learn Maya? Maya is a fantastic tool, and depending on what you want to be able to do, um, I, I recommend it. Um, you'll, you'll open up a lot more possibilities for yourself if you do. Um, but there are jobs out there, and there are people out there who just do ZBrush, or who just do Substance Painter, or who just do um all a whole number of things um so yeah and it, it's really kind of just just aimed at what it is that you would like to do um hey niffer good to see you um Yeah, we get a lot. We get. Uh, I get a lot of people contacting me about Blender and these. Uh, I got. I like to call them the Blender evangel evangelists. <laughs> um, Blender's getting better, but it's not industry standard. So it's you know it's it's free. So that's nice. Uh, you can use it to create production ready and production usable meshes and, and uh, rigs and characters and environments and all sorts of all sorts of really really cool things I've seen some really cool things done with it uh, there are some films uh, internationally that have been made or games that have been made hey Scott what's going on up in here? close the door um, but um, but it's not industry standard, um, and part of it may be just that it's late to the game, um, part of it might be that it's, you know, it's just, it's just been Blender for so long that people don't trust it like they, oh, I don't want to take my smooth. Shoot. What am I doing? Okay. <laughs> Maybe it's just that people have been in Maya for so long that, uh, you know, like myself, like, I mean, I've been in it for 13 years. And so going into Blender again, I mean, I, Blender's the first software that I tried out at home. Um, Back when I was starting in 3D, uh, I tried it before I before I tried Maya, and I don't I don't like it. I didn't like it then. Um, but again, that doesn't go to say that there aren't people that can do some phenomenal things with it. Kind of like uh, kind of like Mudbox. <laughs> I'm not saying people can't do amazing things in Mudbox, but ZBrush is better. <laughs> I feel like John Oliver. How much longer do we have on Rockwork? 18 minutes, okay. Just want to make sure, because I, I really want to get into posing that other character. I think that it'll help add a huge level of uh, appeal. Man, 
if there was somebody that I could learn rock work from, it would be Sean Abshner from uh, from Disney. Super, super talented. Um, yeah, Waste of Resin. It certainly would have been if I had sent the wrong pieces, but I sent the right pieces, so we're good. Yeah, I felt the panic. <laughs> Getting ready to print a Super Star Destroyer on the SLA printer. Dude, that'll be crazy. <coughs> you'll, have to you'll have to send me pictures when you get that done. Is becoming a 3D artist profitable and promising and international? My country still far behind in the studio. Ask their artists to do general things and minimal payment. Uh, which country are you in? Are you up in... Let me see. Andrew Jonathan. Where, where, where are you located at, bud? Um, because I know in some places, like I've got, I've got friends that work, um, all over Europe. Um, I've got friends, you know, like Belgium. I've got friends in London. Um, I got some friends over in India. I've got a few friends in Japan. It really kind of just depends on, um, if you're, if you're good enough to, to compete with everyone um then you you'll you can get the jobs and that's that's kind of the idea of it all is that you want to you want to be able to to compete and there's plenty of work um it's a it's a hard it's a hard thing to believe sometimes but there is plenty of work um and so you know, a lot of it comes down to how well you can network, um, how well you can um, negotiate, like negotiating your your contracts and things like that. Even even here in the states, it's it's like that. It's kind of tough to negotiate your contracts, but you still have to go through and you have to network and you have to negotiate. And you have to understand. Um, Oh, Igor put a brush up. <clears throat> are you just are you just referring to uh, to the project, or did he actually put a put a brush up? Cause I don't I don't see the actual brush, but yeah, I love how that hair turned out. Super super detailed. It's a little bit too detailed for what I usually like to do. Um, but I mean, he works at a major AAA game studio, um, so you know that's still cool. <laughs> Let me see. 14 minutes, man, we're doing, we're making some good progress so far. In a few minutes, we're going to want to go through and kind of check it with, uh, with everything else on just to see if, if, uh, you know, where we're going to want to add maybe more areas of, you know, flatness, like maybe right here. I think, I think I actually want to go ahead now. Come on, you, there we go. Cool. And give it a little bit of that cracking. Okay, now let's so one of the one of the things I want to be really really mindful of is that this spot right here is where our main character, where our protagonist, is interacting with uh, the dragon. Okay. So I'm trying to go through and figure out. Okay, how do I want this landscape to go here? Kind of a hard color to deal with. <laughs> Let's, uh, I'm going to turn off. Is that easier to see? 
if you have complaints one way or another. I haven't tested the Moi 3D. Uh, I want to, though, at some point. So many disciplines, so little time. Belgium, yep. Um, your value isn't what you can do, it's how much you can get paid for it. Um, I'll disagree. Um, however, I, I think I see, I think I understand the where you're coming from with that. Um, if I'm getting paid $10 an hour to do a task, um, but I'm really, really good at it, um, say maybe I am the world's best sculptor, but I live in India and I'm getting paid, maybe not, I don't think it's even that much. Uh, I don't, I don't think, uh, but you know, if I'm getting paid $10 a, uh, an hour, uh, and I'm world's best sculptor, that doesn't change my value, but it does show how, um, it does show that, like a difference of a difference between where you are and your and your bargaining potential, um, because like literally some of the best sculptors that I know are from India or other places in the world, like Belgium, like where the industry isn't huge, um, but they get good work because uh, because they. They, they can network, they know how to handle um, that side of things. Um, there's too much separation there. It's, we're just going to kind of level this out. Oh, you know what? Let's do it like this. Okay, here's a trick. So your value is not how much you get paid for a task, but... Um, it's certainly a lot easier to feel like you're worth more um, when you stick your neck out for yourself and and bargain higher. So so that's my that's my challenge to you. Um, it'd be better for artists everywhere uh, if people start start charging more for their services because um, right now artists. Really, really, artists don't get paid very, very well, but we're the ones responsible for the creation of everything that everyone enjoys, right? Um, so my suggestion is to, to go through and think about, okay, how much do I get paid? How much do I have to pay for my software, for my equipment, for my housing, or your, or your, like, you know, your location, wherever you're wherever you're working out of. Um, and make sure that you are making enough on your projects uh, to be able to make ends meet. Okay, don't be don't be afraid if you've got if you've got the skills to be able to you know to be able to charge for a project, you know you know, say you would normally charge a hundred dollars for a project, but you're really good. Uh, don't be afraid to charge, you know, three or four thousand dollars, depending on what the project is. Um, and uh, and network, you know, be be extremely proactive in that way. Um, it's like. Yeah, you know, really, people are, you know, we, we got to kind of look out for each other in that sort of way. It's like, I'm, I'm very happily out of the, uh, the freelancing world at the moment. Um, very happily. But it's, it's one of those things where if I if I jump back in uh, and I need to and I need to invoice somebody for a job, I'm not going to be afraid to charge them what I feel like my services are worth. 
uh, my services are not in, like my service charges are not indicative of my worth. It's a, it's a it's a it's an indication of how much my time, my skills, uh, my talents, my um, you know how what I valued that project at. Kind of I don't know. I'm, I'm trying to think about the best way to to explain that, but hopefully that makes sense. Push that over here. Kind of like that. Not that that'll ever be seen, but you know, whatever. <laughs> That's one of those tricky things because sometimes you work on something and it's just never going to be seen. So it's like, why spend a whole bunch of time on it? Like these rocks back here, I probably won't do anything more to them because I'm never going to see them. At least not in the way that I intend to, to display. A lot of back and forth. I'm gonna try to get some good shapes going in up here. I'll just get rid of that uh, orange piece here. Yeah, that's a good choice. And we'll just take this piece and kind of pull it over. Let me see. Oh yeah, best advice for new upcoming beginners getting into 3D art. Yeah, definitely spend a ton of time. Um, spend the time putting together a cool portfolio uh, don't be afraid of reaching out to professionals and like people that you that you look up to and, and admire that are in the uh, the industry that you want to go into. So like if I'm wanting to go into into video games, I'm not really going to reach out to somebody who does toys. Um, or if I want to go into <laughs> vice versa, um, potentially, right? Anyway. Uh, one of the things that you want to do, and one of the things that I was always doing, uh, and still do pretty regularly, is uh, reach out to people for feedback. Um, I try to I try to network first because it's kind of hard reaching out to somebody who's really really busy, um, you know, such as the life, right? Um, But by reaching out to people, uh, inviting people to, to lunch or to coffee or to whatever, um, it kind of gives, gives you an opportunity to get to know them, ask them about how they got into the industry. Um, you know, definitely like attending and watching things like this, uh, like, like the uh, ZBrush Live. Or, or other live streamers, or other people that have their content online, on Gumroad, on, uh, on Flip Normals, on you know, all sorts of different places. Uh, those sorts of resources are going to be invaluable to you. Um, so keep, keep pushing for your personal learning. Um, 
and make sure that you that you understand when it's time for you to just take a break. Like I'm not very good at taking breaks. <laughs> and I need to be. <laughs> Like usually at work, I'll take, I'll take like a, I'll take a five minute break or a couple minute break or you know, whatever, you know, get water, go to the bathroom, whatever I need to do you know, every you know, half hour or so at work. Um, when I'm here, I don't, I don't like taking breaks because this is like, this is my relaxed time. This is me getting to do something fun and, and uh, something where I feel like I'm developing and I'm growing. Um, so that's like the whole point of these streams for me is it's for me to be able to have a little bit of uh, a little bit of time working that isn't actual work, but it's still helping me to develop in ways that are professionally helpful. Um, Oh, not move, um, inflate. So yeah, find ways to to practice. And if you're uh, if you're interested, um, I started. You know, I, those of you who have been here earlier and, and whatnot, you, you already know about this. Um, but I started a um, I started a design challenge on. Facebook, did I leave that open? I think I did not leave it open. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll open it up. So it's a Facebook group called No Spare Time. Okay, so here's our, our current month theme. Okay, Midsummer Night's Horror. Okay. <laughs> Just kind of going off of like the blockbuster vibe, or however you want to, however you want to uh, to interpret that. Um, ah, Forty-two seconds, but yeah. So this is that's uh, a cool group for you to join. I would I would uh, take advantage of little challenges. I mean, it's it's not anything serious. You're not going to get penalized if you uh, if you don't participate. You're not going to uh, you know lose an opportunity at a job interview or anything like that. But it's one of those things that allows you to network with other people who are trying to also improve and get better, uh, who want to learn new things or who want to push themselves uh, in their design abilities. So it's a, it's a way for you to be able to, you know, you can do 3D modeling. Uh, you could do uh, sculpting you can do a drawing you know you can you can take that challenge however you want to um, those of you who are here earlier this is what I started which looking back at it I don't know I, I think I have a lot to uh, adjust and uh, and whatnot but he's going to be the undead boyfriend and I'm going to uh, create like a like a, a tinder mock-up or whatever for him so that'll be fun. Okay, you guys, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Let's get that kind of lined up. don't want this to feel blobby. I want it to feel more like a shelf. Let's make this feel like a little teeny tiny ledge kind of coming out here. And then we'll jump into we'll jump into posing that character here in just a second. Okay. 
lots of different ways that you can go about this. But this is the right way. Just kidding. <laughs> it's a super messy way, but it super, super works. Okay, we're going to do something like that. And so since we have everything in a very low poly sort of state, everything is very, very uh, rigid, which really goes to support the idea of rocks. Okay, so I mean, there'll be some things like, like this that I'm going to want to clean up. Okay, so just kind of smooth that out some. I'm just gonna crease that, crease that. So now this is what this is looking like. Okay. Super, super. Hey, Bill. How you doing? Yeah, no. So uh, for my streams, um, I used to be on weekly. Um, and then I kind of went to more of a more of like an every other week sort of uh, sort of thing um, and uh, yeah so right now uh, so far this month I'm scheduled for um, the 31st uh, for a solo stream but then I've also got a really cool so this is this is something that's it's still kind of in the works so far as organize, organizing it um, organizing it um, but yeah we got another group stream coming up um, with a couple of with a couple of friends, it'll be on the twenty seventh, if I remember correctly. Um, and that'll be, uh, I think, like five to eight LA time. Um, Yeah, something like that. And then, uh, so that'll be with Ana Carolina uh, and Pablo Muñoz. So this is, it's going to be a blast. Um, I'm really, really looking forward to being able to, to stream with these two. Um, for those of you who have seen it before, uh, you might have seen... Um, you might have seen me stream with Anna Carolina and Ashley Adams, and that was a lot of fun. Um, what we're planning on doing yeah, I guess Let's see this. Okay. Um, but yeah, so we're, we're planning on doing this little stream. coming up here in a couple of weeks. Uh, that'll be a Tuesday night. Um, it should be a lot of fun. Okay, uh, If any of you watch their streams, you'll know how, how insanely talented they are. Okay, Pablo is from Australia, or you know, he's streaming out of Australia. <laughs> um, and he streams, he's the one that's responsible for organizing ZBrush guides. Okay, really phenomenal resource. So if you don't get his emails or download his documents and read through them, uh, that's another great uh, opportunity for self-taught learning. Um, that's kind of all right.
Let's move that out a little bit, and then we're going to go back in, and we're going to try to kind of emphasize this crack here a little bit. But yeah, so that's kind of what's uh, what's going on. <laughs> um. Thanks, Spear Chuck. Oh, we don't have a ton of time left, so let's leave the rock work where it is for now. And we'll come back to it next time. Oh, but I wanna. Let's do this. Kind of pull that out. Okay, guys. Has everybody seen Endgame? because I just bought it this past week and I watched it and it's got me bawling, dude. <laughs> it's got me bawling. <laughs> uh, I'm not crying, you're crying. It's like I already miss Mr. Stark. Ugh. I can't handle it. <laughs> it's like, what does that say about our culture when we, like... Well, it's okay. I mean, like, honestly, people cry over their book characters dying, too. I can cry over a movie character dying. He's a comic book character, a book character, and he died in the most heroic way possible. <laughs> <laughs> I can't. I can't. I just can't. <laughs> oh, oh my gosh. <laughs> Gotta get through this. Okay. Got a half hour. <laughs> Thor was the best thing. You thought Thor was the best thing? Oh my gosh. Uh, Thor was funny. Yeah, I'll take the big one, you take the middle one. <laughs> I thought that was powerful. So many powerful things. So many powerful things. Okay, okay, leave it. Leave it, Steven, leave it. Leave it, just leave it. Just stop playing with this. Okay, time to go on to the character. Okay, we're good. Okay, we're good. We're good. Okay, save it. You gotta go into the right folder. Hit save. Replace it. Yes. Okay. <laughs> yeah. I mean, oh my gosh. That was. Tremendous. I mean, that was just that was just too much. It was too much. It was too much, guys. I couldn't handle it. Okay. Anyway, so let's uh. Let's come over here. Okay. So here's like. <laughs> The standard neutral. And there's the the file, uh, the smile file. <laughs> so it kind of goes back and forth between you know neutral and and uh, and excited. So the uh, the idea next time possibly is to go through and do um, I'm gonna say char b expression two I'll know what I, I'll, I'll know what that means
By the way, if you guys are interested, I am selling digital files for um, for my desk pets now. Okay, so you see, here's my my shark. This is one that I that I printed for a friend. I'll just hold it up like that. Wrong, wrong, wrong. And then uh, he comes with like this little uh, ice cream shout bubble. <laughs> so yeah, if you want to go through and find uh, find uh, print files and things like that, you can go to my website. You see it over there in the in the middle on the bottom, and uh, you can you can buy the STLs and print them out yourself. Uh, a lot of fun, a lot of fun. Oh, I've got a I got my hippo too. It's one that I went through and and, uh, and painted uh, this past week, trying to learn how to hold things in front of a camera. Just kidding. How to how to paint? It's it's a ton of fun. It's really really fun. Um, but yeah, so th these are these are called desk pets. So you can go through, you can buy the file, and you can print it out yourself and put it around your uh, you know, on your desk at, at work, at home, you know, whatever. However you want to go about it. Okay, so we're going to do this. Okay, I see. So what I want to do is we have, okay, we have the face. Okay, we're just going to, we're just going to have this selected. We're going to come in. We want to take the whole folder over. Z plugin, uh, not transpose, master, subtool, master, copy folder. And we got to go over to here. And we're going to go Z plugin paste folder. Okay, so now there are, there are extra pieces in this folder that I don't need. So let's come over here. Let's find. I don't need this. Okay, so delete. Always okay. Delete. I don't need this extra mouth parts. <laughs> I don't need these extra eyebrows. The hat, maybe it could stay. Let's get rid of the hats. We can pull them in later if we need other hats or whatever. Delete that because that's extra. And now we're good to go. All right. Okay, this guy is going to be posed on this dragon. And I'm trying to decide if he's too small. He needs to be upsized Just do something like that. I think that'll work. Whoops. Let's say Turn off symmetry and all these things. Here, let's do this. Let's go to transform. Now we can just go down the list. Off symmetry for that hat. Okay. Let's turn this back on now. And first things first, I'm just going to go ahead and start pulling them over and putting them in position. 
Um, I want him to feel like he's like aggressively like leading the dragon on. Not like aggressive, like I don't want him to feel like he's being cruel, but I, I want him to feel like he's uh, in pursuit of the man with the fish. Okay, so what we're gonna do so we're going to start by positioning him. I want I want to position his torso first. This will help us so that everything else is kind of in the general direction that I want want him to be in. Um, and to me, it just makes it a lot easier to go through and uh, and position everything and sculpt everything else into position. So, so let's do this and then. Pull him down. We'll probably make him so that he's uh, it's like he's got his knees in, like like he's kneeling on the back of the dragon. Uh, I might make some sort of harness on there or something. I don't know. I haven't uh, haven't figured that part out yet. <clears throat> yeah. So there's that so far. Now what I want to do. This is the tricky part. There we go. I don't believe that man's ever been to medical school. Let's do this. One of the things you can do is with the select lasso. If you control shift and click on an edge, it'll hide an edge loop. And since I want to be able to mask everything up to a certain point, um, it makes it really, really nice. Okay, cool. Turn on this bad boy here, and we gotta go through, and we gotta do this, and then we gotta do this. Okay, so I want to make sure I only have the things selected that I want to affect. Okay, so now we want to go ahead and we want to turn his head, which that'll be tricky. When I try to when I post things, I try to make sure that I get my gizmo going in the right direction. Ooh, that's already looking cool. Something like Something like that, maybe. And I'm not going to lie. <coughs> <coughs> Will I pose it with Transpose Master? I can. Uh, I'm not sure that I will. Um, when did I start doing modeling stuff? I started doing modeling stuff in 2006, or, but I didn't like Blender, so it was a good thing I started learning Maya. Uh, Blender's gotten better since then, but whatever. Anyway, so... So... You know, let's turn on our other character just to make sure that we have him looking in the right direction. Um, but yeah, and then uh, 
what motivated me to be a pro modeler? Um, that's a good question. <laughs> I ask myself the same question sometimes. Um, It's, um, for me, there was a lot of, so like in high school, I wanted to be, uh, I wanted to be a marine biologist, which is completely not even related at all to <laughs> what I'm doing now. Um, Which is fine. Uh, well, let's say delete lower, modify topology, delete hidden. Um, and so one of the things that that I let's see, close convex hole resolution three. And then polygroup flat. Um, but one of the things that, that happened is a friend of mine invited me to take a class with him uh, at our high school that was, oh shoot. Um, I had no idea that those were the same polygroup, that's funny. Um, he invited me to take the, uh, to take the, the, the 3D modeling class with me, uh, with him, uh, and a 3D animation class rather. And it boggled my mind that that was even a possibility <laughs> for one, but, uh, but it was cool. I really liked it. And, uh, and so I decided to, to kind of pursue it more. Um, I actually do have an Instagram. Uh, if you look over in the, in the middle of the, of the screen along the bottom, you'll see my website and that'll have links to, to everything. Um, you know what? I forgot that that's not what I wanted to do. Um, but yeah, so essentially what I, what I did is I, I discovered that BYU had a really super stellar animation program and it's one of the top in the world. And so I decided to go to BYU and to learn 3D animation and to get really good at it. <laughs> and yeah, I kind of did. Um, so what I was able to, to do is I was able to figure out, okay, I like doing this, I don't like doing this. I was able to experiment with all sorts of different little um, with all sorts of different little uh, technologies and um, <clears throat> and uh, good golly, I can't even think. It's like I'm I'm too I'm too focused on like rushing and not focusing on the people. <laughs> um, I discovered 3D modeling and discovered that I really like it. Um, it is hard and I, I, I really feel like I kind of liked that. 
Um, I liked that it was a challenge. I'm gonna flip that around. That might be the best way to get the look and the shape that I'm <laughs> looking for as quickly as possible. Um, but yeah, I mean, this is like. This is absolutely just everything that that I've that I've loved doing. Um, uh, delete lower. Uh, which one was I looking for? I was looking for the curve. You know what? We're gonna undo this. Let's say I can't uh, delete. Put this up here. Go back to this. Now I can use bend curve, and that'll work much better for me. Um, It's cool as you can grab these and you can twist them and scale them and I might just leave that kind of where it is for now. It's going to reposition it. That'll make it a little simpler. The nice thing about this tool is that it gives me an opportunity to think composition and to think flow and motion and all of that. Um, and then as you as you want to, you can add more resolution to your curve and it, it just makes the process really, really nice. see where's the there it is except okay let's see You test someone who's starting an animation, which software to use. Um, whatever, whatever part of the industry that you're wanting to go into, find out what is what is the standard. Um, Maya is always a safe bet. Um, everybody uses Maya. Uh, actually, let's just keep that. Um, so you're not you're not going to go wrong if you start learning Maya. Um, it's not something that's going to be irrelevant too soon, um, and and it won't be a waste of your time in any way, shape, or form. <coughs> um, there are a lot of people that will go through and that they'll uh, vouch for Blender. It's a great tool. I don't use it because I don't like it. Um, and it's not what I use for work, so um, yeah, it's just it's just not industry standard for us here in the states. Um, ZBrush is is very industry standard in a lot of different industries, from everything from um, I mean, I use it at Disney. I use it for rapid prototyping, for toys, for um, theme park rides, I use it for characters and for yeah, all sorts of things, all sorts of things. Um, 
So ZBrush is a really, really good one for you to, to, to learn, uh, to play with, and, and to, to experiment with. If you're going into te texturing, you're going to want to learn things like Substance Painter and, and possibly Mari. Uh, Mari is really expensive, and it's only used at a very handful of places, like a very small handful of places. So it's not a huge deal if you can't learn Mari. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a it's a really nice tool. Um, Substance Painter, Substance Designer, all the all the algorithmic um, tools are extremely helpful. Um, whoops, not that. Um, what else? Adobe stuff, Photoshop. Um, Depending on what you're going to want to do, you might you might learn Illustrator, After Effects. Um, After Effects is good for video, so like I I use After Effects for my demo reel um, or other things. Um, but yeah, animation wise, like if you're if you're wanting to get into animation, if you're wanting to do 2D, you look into things like Toon Boom. Or what's the other one that people have been using lately? It seems like there are another like one or two programs that, that have become pretty standard um, for 2D animation. Uh, I used to use Flash when when that was a thing. It's not really a thing anymore. <laughs> I think it's been completely like this band. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of funny. Anyway, um, so. But for, for 3D animation, I'm pretty sure that all people use, if it's not proprietary, if it's not specific to the company that they're working for, it's Maya. Um, if you're outside of the US, and uh, I mean, you know, you could still learn things like Blender. Blender is free. They do have animation tools, and the principles are very applicable. Um, but yeah, why did we get into VFX, currently learning Cinema 4D and Houdini. Um, yeah, there are definitely tons of jobs for, uh, for people going into commercials, VFX and whatnot. Um, PSYOP, P-S-Y-O-P. Uh, that's a great company to look into if you're wanting to try to get into like commercials and Cinema 4D and you know, things like that. Uh, I'm pretty sure that's in huge part what they what they deal in is is uh, is Cinema 4D Maya. Um, I mean, it's been a while since I've seen. Since I've uh, since I've looked at job postings from them, um, but yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm pretty sure that's what they what they have what they do. Um, Cinema 40 and Maya, and and some Adobe stuff. Okay, so so make sure you got those sorts of things going on. Um, Yeah, so I design theme park rides. Uh, I design <coughs> all sorts of stuff. Uh, I just worked on some stuff for the D uh, Disneyland Tokyo Park extension. Um, I'm still I'm still working on some stuff with them and whatnot, and it's it's a it's an absolute blast. I love my job. Um, but yeah, definitely not. Uh, your run-of-the-mill job that everybody thinks about is theme parks and uh, and those sorts of things. It's like they have to be made, um, you know. And uh, and yeah, in large part, there are engineers that are working on those things. <coughs> um, but there are also a lot of artists that are. Um, 
that are working on the aesthetic side of things. The engineers will go through and make it work, and the uh, the creatives will make it look pretty. Um, so it's 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 really really nice. Um, So Houdini is very pertinent. Um, it's a very good tool for a lot of things, like for, for VFX, for procedural mod modeling. Um, like if you wanted to populate a surface with, uh, with uh, like if you wanted to populate a log with mushrooms, or if you wanted to, um, that, that type of thing. Uh, I'm sure there's more you can do with it. I, it's been years since I've been in Houdini, but uh, but Houdini is great. But it will not replace everything else. It's it's a it's a supplemental tool. It's a more specialized tool. Um, so yeah, I I wouldn't I wouldn't go through and worry that like by. Um, By learning Houdini, you're not neglecting. <coughs> um, you know, you're not you're not going to you're not going to. It's not going to be a bad tool to learn. It's going to be a really good tool to learn. In fact, that's something that I want to learn. Um, trying to figure out my my brain is not functioning today. <laughs> But yeah, so great tool, great tool to learn. But no, it's not going to replace other modeling applications. It's it's more just a, a matter of um, getting getting the supplemental tools that you need to be able to do your job. So yeah. Uh, where can we go to follow more of my work? So if you want to be able to follow my work, there's my website right there in the in the center on the bottom. Um, I'll, let me post a link. Um, or you can also go to instagram.com slash smartest. S-M-A-A-R-T-I-S-T. I can't tell if that's working or not. It looks like it's not working. Um, but yeah, how did I end, uh, end up being able to design rides at Disneyland? Um, yeah, I mean, it's, a lot of it has to do, like I was talking about before, with networking. Uh, networking is a huge part of your success as an artist. Um, and I came across that job um because so I, I was working at DreamWorks, but then um but then they didn't have any more projects for me after after I was working on how to train your dragon. And so they uh so you know I got I got let go. And, um, but then a friend, you know, somebody contacted a friend of mine over at DreamWorks asking if, um, asking if they knew any modelers that, you know, could use ZBrush and things like that. And, and of course, you know, he brought up my name and everything and it was super cool. Uh, so I, I went ahead and interviewed with them and that was like March of last year. Uh, right, actually, yeah, March of last year, 
and uh, oh come on stop doing that um, and then interviewed with them uh, and then and then in September is when I actually got to start working uh, for Disney which has been a ride <laughs> in and of itself <laughs> but yeah super super cool it's a great job um, What you need. I think it's in the uh, the bathroom. Yeah. I think so. It's the it's the the bottle with like the squirt top, right, or whatnot, right? Mm -hmm. I'm pretty sure. That one, right? Mm I still have a minute. <laughs> yeah, it's about time for, for me to head on out. Let's see if we can get. So I'm gonna have to let's take let's take the vest. I should be able to reposition the vest. Okay, let's uh, merge the vest. Uh, Visible tool count. This is one of the things that's been like tremendously helpful to me. Um, I wish that they would up, update us at work, but uh, they haven't yet, so you know, whatever. Um, uh oh, uh oh, failed to connect the chat server. Is everybody still there? Is everybody all right? Can you still see just fine? I haven't gotten any kind of any kind of complaints yet, so <laughs> of course I might not have gotten any complaints for uh, the obvious reasons of maybe you guys aren't getting <laughs> the stream, hopefully. Hopefully you are. We have to like reposition a couple of those stitches but uh for right now we're just going to kind of go through here I want it to feel kind of like a thicker material, so I'm going to I'm going to leave it kind of doubled over like that. And in fact, I might even like let's adjust this a little bit so that it feels even more like it's folded right there. Um Yeah, just trying to make sure that all these stitches like line up. Let's see, we gotta go ahead, we gotta get these pieces. Actually, let's do this and do this. And we'll reposition these stitches right here and right here. Right 
and in fact what we'll probably do is once we get these stitches kind of lined up uh, I probably need to pull the stitches back out so that they're their own separate sub tool so let's go ahead and stitches okay Well, that's what it's looking like so far. I'll probably take that cor those corners and like, you know, wing them out. Um, and yeah, so far so good. Let's go through good and good. Wide focal length. Oh yeah, that's right. Actual please. Let's close that. Let's turn off our other character. And there we go. He started. It's nice that you can't see his legs, so it looks like he's actually kind of riding it. <laughs> so yeah, we'll go ahead and we'll uh, we'll talk about that some other time and it'll be uh uh, Alright, we'll uh, we'll go ahead and finish that out some other time, and probably next time, and and uh, yeah, we'll play with the uh, with some other things. We'll go back to our um, we'll go back to our horror sculpt. I'll probably do some some spare time if I can find any, um, and then uh, next time I should be able to show you how the print turned out. Um, for for that other character that I was showing you earlier. For this little lady. Okay. So lots of fun. Lots and lots and lots of fun. So we're 35. There we go. Well yeah. Thanks for thanks for coming and hanging out with me today and and uh <coughs> and uh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Charles is really recognizable. It's fun. Thanks for checking that out. Uh, so I I use a Form Two printer just to be able to kind of you know just try to answer these questions before I before I check out. Um, yeah. So the creative industries are really kind of tricky. Uh, a lot of places they run based on budgets and budgets renew at the end of the year most of the time so a lot of times there's a lot of work um, just before special events or there's a lot of work at the beginning of a year and then just kind of like falls off and then like the last three months of the year some places are really dry at Disney so far um, I don't see that being an issue uh, which is really nice um, at DreamWorks, it's a per project thing, <clears throat> um, and a, a lot of a lot of film studios are like that, where it's like it's based on the project. So if you're there for one film, um, you have to be kind of on top of getting onto the next film, or else you're toast. <laughs> anyway, so. Yeah, just uh, make sure that you stay on top of things when you get jobs, and and uh, be be constantly looking and seeing where you're going to be stepping to next. That's kind of all I got for you today. So you know, thanks for chatting and hanging out with me. It was a lot of fun. I, I really like when there are people to chat with, uh, joke around with, all of that when I when I'm sculpting. It's 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 fun. It's fun. So anyway, yeah. Thanks, and I will see you. Don't forget to, to check out on the check just to make sure. Pretty sure the 27th. Yeah, the 27th. Tuesday, the 27th should be uh, the group stream. Okay, so three of us. Um, 
myself, Ana Carolina, and uh, Pablo Munoz. Munoz. Um, yeah, that'll be a lot of fun. So the 27th, then you can stay stay tuned uh, for announcements and whatnot on what um, what time uh, things like that for it to know for sure. And then my next personal stream on ZBrush Live will be the 31st. So yeah, I will see you around and uh, thanks for coming and hanging out with me. And yeah, hope to see you around soon. Don't forget to check out the ZBrush Summit coming up at the end of next month too. Uh, that'll be a really good amount of fun. Uh, if you can make it out to be on campus at Noman, um, even better.